It's pretty impressive, to be honest. Interesting first step as to not code. Claude and these like very specific coding gen AI, AI models, they're gonna replace like probably first. Hey everyone, how's it going? Today, I'm gonna be doing a React video where I'm gonna be reading some articles about vibe coding and possibly Claude 3.7. Basically, I'm researching and preparing a video on vibe coding and I thought it would be great for you guys to kind of come along with me and read some of these articles that may help you learn about vibe coding and also, you know, the latest and greatest AI models like Claude 3.7. So I have an article by someone named Peter Yang. He's a principal at Roblox. Um, he's someone I follow on LinkedIn. I've been basically seeing him post a bunch of videos about him creating like 3D video games and things like that. So I thought it would be really fun to see because if a PM can do this with no coding experiences, I feel like someone who can code can even leverage this even better. So if you enjoy this article that I'm gonna read, go ahead and give Peter a follow on LinkedIn and also YouTube. I'll link them in the descriptions below. So let's go. I built a 3D Star Wars game without writing a single line of code and you can too. Cloud 3.7 plus cursor and vibe coding heaven. This is kind of very true. I've been using cursor a lot lately and it's been just like pretty fantastic to be honest. It's been a game changer. So this is written by Peter Yang. Dear subscribers, I haven't been sleeping much lately. Instead, I've been up late building games with cursor and Anthropic's new AI model. Previously, coding with AI meant spending hours fixing bugs instead of creating, but Claude 3.7 Sonnet has completely changed the game. Last night, I built the 3D Star Wars game where you fly an X-Wing to destroy the Death Star without writing a single line of code myself. It felt like magic. In this post, I'll share my step-by-step -step process so that you can create your own epic games with AI. Let's check out this 3D game. Stand by alert. Death Star approaching. Estimated time to firing range. The Star Wars game that we'll build. Here's a clip from my Star Wars game. Sound on for the epic music. It features a TIE fighter that hunts you down, epic music and sound effects, X-wings that dynamically open and close based on speed. Now let's build this from scratch. It's just seven steps. All right. Install cursor. I'm going to skip. Um, step two, work with AI to write a spec. Kick off the project with this prompt. Sounds like a true PM starting with the spec instead of just starting with hello world or writing code. <laughs> Looking at the spec, I want to build a 3D space shooter of an X-Wing attacking a Death Star. Can you first write the readme file or markdown file? Let's make it simple and build it one step at a time. Don't code yet. Interesting. Interesting first step as to not code yet. That's not what I would do. <laughs> Tip one, a good spec is your secret weapon. Ask AI to write the requirements, tech stack, and a roadmap that breaks the project sound into phases. Breaking the project into phases is crucial because AI isn't great at building the entire spec in one shot. Fair. Here's the readme file, phase out approach that AI created. It's pretty cool. Death Star 3D project development roadmap. Phase one, build a basic setup, set up the project structure. Okay. Phase two, flight controls, implement controls, uh, keyboard mouse, physics, um, camera that follows the X-Wing. Phase three, Death Star and environment. Add Death Star model, implement collision detection, create space environment with stars and plants, uh, planets. Phase four, combat system. Add laser shooting mechanics, implement hit detection, create explosion. All right, step three, build a foundation. Your spec also becomes a reference point for the future prompts. I simply ask AI to build phase one and it creates a perfectly working X-Wing model on the first try. All right, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Tip two, build and test one small feature at a time. Asking AI to build everything at once is a recipe for disaster. I think this is kind of true for like regular software engineers too. Like you don't want to try to build the whole thing out. Um, if you have like a large thing that you need to build, build in small chunks, small diffs, right? Or PRs. Add X-Wing controls and a Death Star. Next, I ask AI to add ship controls and shooting. I previously built a plane game with a similar control, so I uploaded an image of the UI and asked AI to code it. The camera and shooting mechanics took a few iterations to get right. Bring the camera closer to the back of the ship. Also, the space to fire is not working. Can you add yellow lasers that come out of the nose of the ship? Make sure the laser always comes out of the nose and the direction of the laser should respect wherever the nose is pointing. This is definitely kind of like instructions I get from my PM all the time <laughs> or designers. You know, it's really impressive that like you can do all of this without 
coding yourself like that that is still like very impressive to me i've seen demos like this it's always really fascinating to me like obviously the graphics and stuff like that is not like you know top tier or anything but it's just really cool that you can do this now the barrier to coding has never been like lower in my opinion Tip three, restore checkpoints is a lifesaver for returning to clean code if AI builds something you don't want. Then came the fun part, adding the Death Star and coding a glorious explosion, but when hit with enough lasers. I actually didn't test this because I didn't destroy any Death Star or TIE Fighters. All right, that's cool. I see a little bug there, but that's fine. Course preview. We'll build three to four products live in the upcoming AI course. It looks like Peter has some kind of upcoming course. Step five. Add the TIE Fighters and enemy AI. Adding TIE Fighters with intelligent behaviors seemed tricky. So I asked AI, describe how you build this. Don't code yet. The plan AI gave me below was way too complex. So I asked to simplify it. So one of the key things that I've been realizing that I, I actually haven't been really integrating to my like cursor slash like vibe coding test is to like, I always tell it to just try to do the code. But I think like this medium step where you ask it to write a plan and then try to execute on the plan. I think that's like a really interesting step. I'm going to definitely try that out in my example. So looking through this implementation steps, first create the TIE fighter model, basic movements, add the X-Wing health system and UI, implement the TIE fighter AI and laser firing, add collision detection for enemy lasers, create power up systems, implement mission tracking, polish the visuals and audio effects. Would you like me to focus on implementing any specific parts of the plan first? I can start with the TIE auto models and basic AI. Or we could continue with the health of the system of the X-Wing. <laughs> nah, too complicated. Update the plan. It's interesting, like I'm not reading all of this, but like this next part where it says don't code yet, just update the plan. Even better if you can break it down into steps. I really like this tip. Tip four, force AI to plan first before coding complex features, then ruthlessly simplify that plan before letting AI build it. That's really interesting. Okay, after testing, I found the enemy AI boring. TIE Fighters just beelining for my ship. So I asked the AI for options to make their movements less predictable. Okay, what's the easiest and co less, least complex don't code? Like to me, this is like, changes my perspective a lot on how I would approach this. Like I keep saying this, but I feel like I, could, I would just like tell it to code every single time. Tip five, ask for AI for options ranked from simple to complex when facing tough challenges. Nine out of 10 times, you should choose the simpler options. Okay, here's how the game looked with the TIE Fighters hunting me down. Okay, where are the TIE Fighters? Oh, there it goes. Oh. All right, interesting. <laughs> It's pretty impressive, to be honest, like just be seeing this. <laughs> All right, step six, add the game states, music and sound. Then I asked AI to add star victory and fail scenes. Claw 3.7 nailed it in one shot. I mean, UI, like honestly, I feel like Claude and these like coding, like very specific coding gen AI, AI models, they're going to replace like probably front end engineers first. Not that I'm saying front end engineering is easy or anything, because I personally am like a client engineer, you know, I, I do mobile and I also wrote a ton of React back in the day. I just think like that code is like just more widely available. And there's like very simple like visual feedbacks. And so I don't know the exact process for training obviously all of these models, but I feel like that's going to be like the first major milestone. Also, you just need more client engineers in a lot of like places. Like, you know, there is a reason why front end engineering is one of the easiest and most straightforward path to landing your first like junior position. It's because you just need a lot of client engineers to like tweak buttons here and there, make UI changes. This whole world involves around like UI, like interfaces. No Star Wars game is complete without an iconic sound and epic music. For sound, I went old school and found the Star Wars soundboard where I could download clips. I use Sono to generate this epic track. Okay, Sono is another AI music app. That's something I should probably look into another time. All right, after adding all the sound files to my project, I asked AI to play them at the right moments. The laser sounds were overwhelming, so I asked AI for similar options. Make the X-Wing blast and TIE Fighter blast sound effects are pretty overwhelming and spammy. What do you think we should do to fix it? Don't code. Interesting. I spent another 10 minutes getting the X-Wing wings to open and close based on the speed. It was totally worth it. Yeah, usually those like little features are like definitely worth it. In my opinion, all those little polishes I always say is what like that like last 10% of the code or even the 1% of the code that like polishes your features. That's the thing 
that really makes your app feel like premium, in my opinion. Uh, step seven, deploy to GitHub pages. Okay, that's pretty straight up. Um, finally, I deployed the game to GitHub pages and let anyone play it. Instead of manually deploying it, I asked Cursor to deploy to GitHub pages and execute the necessary, <laughs> necessary terminal commands and it handled everything perfectly. That is pretty wild, to be honest. Even handling deployment, I didn't actually expect that. I think there's just like certain things that as a software engineer, I take for granted that how easy it is and like how like just straightforward things are, right? GitHub pages and all these like Automation tools for continuous deployment has been like pretty common practice. So it's so true that like someone like a PM or like someone who doesn't know how to code would just actually not really know um, how to do this. It is pretty cool that like AI can just handle all of that. Five tips to excel at vibe coding. I hope this will be me as I'm doing vibe coding next week when I'm making my video on vibe coding. To recap, here are five steps to get started on your own vibe coding journey. A good spec is your secret weapon. Ask AI to write the requirements, text stacks, and a roadmap that breaks the project into phases. Build and test one small feature at a time. Asking AI to build everything at once is a recipe for disaster. Resource checkpoint is a lifesaver for returning to clean code if AI builds something you don't want. I kind of skipped this point, but I, I'm just guessing this is Git. Force AI to plan before coding complex features then ruthlessly simplify that plan before letting AI build it. Ask AI for options ranked from simple to complex when facing tough challenges. Nine out of 10 times you should choose the simpler option. If a PM like me built a 3D Star Wars game using AI in two hours, you have no excuses, especially me. As a staff engineer at Meta, I definitely don't have excuses. So I'll definitely be making some games or some fun projects on the side. Uh, with Claude 3.7 Sonnet, we're entering a new era where anyone can build without traditional coding skills. The gap between idea and creation has never been smaller. 100% agree on that. Now, go build something amazing and let me know in the comments what you create. Exactly. Let me know for yourself. I hope, you know, I'll link all of this stuff below and um, give Peter, obviously, a follow on LinkedIn and YouTube. But this was a great article. Like, I, I think, like, even this article, just reading it, it makes me feel like vibe coding is, like, a genuine thing. Maybe for myself, I could do it um, as a challenge where I, like, just use voice or something <laughs> for my instructions. Like, that might be pretty interesting. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll leave all of the resources below and leave a comment if you wanna see more React content like this. This is a new format that I am testing out. I actually really like this format because it encourages me to you know, read these articles and also like keep in touch with like the latest and greatest in AI and other like software development topics. So I hope I could keep continuing this, but obviously, you know, making videos is challenging. So if they really, really do poorly, then I, you know, I can't really justify keep making them. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave me a like, share with a friend if you want. And don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one.